today is all about DDoS, so right now, the coming eight, ten minutes, so I'm not going to go too deep. Unless you want to go deeper, I'm happy to talk afterwards. But I want to talk a little bit about the threat, the rise in threats of DDoS. It's been happening in the news. You've been reading about it, mainstream media. Uh, your kids have been complaining they couldn't use their PlayStation uh, over Christmas, right? Um, so we'll go a little bit on that. We'll talk about the, um, what, how DDoS is being built up without getting too technical. And then we'll tell you how we can help you protect against the DDoS, to protect your investments, protect your services that you hook up on the internet, which for almost all companies these days is their only source of income. All the revenue comes from people coming to your website, right? Uh, look back in history, uh, going back to 2012, 2013, DDoS attacks have been coming into the mainstream news more and more frequently, and the sizes have been going up and up tremendously. But keep in mind, this is only the tip of the iceberg, right? This is only what hit the mainstream media, all the big stuff, all the stuff that nobody wants to know anybody else about, is not even in here. Very recently, what I was referring to, you may have heard of over Christmas, there was a hacker group called the Lizard Squad, they called themselves. They took out Sony PlayStation, they temporarily took out um, the Xbox network as well. So over Christmas, nobody was able to use their services, and they move on. The purpose can be uh, extortion. The purpose can be um, just for the fun of it, just because they can. There's a lot of that, unfortunately. Uh, extortion, like I said, and just competition. Uh, there's a lot of reasons that people may want to take out the service from somebody else, right? And they've been growing. Very recently, it can be um, political such as uh, recently GitHub is a big repository of uh, online code that people can use. They've been attacked. They had some code on there that was used for freedom of speech. Uh, was didn't go down well with China. And the Great Firewall of China, as it's called, was redirected to take all the, 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 the requests from a popular website, redirected to GitHub, taking it off the internet for all legitimate users. So. The size have been going up tremendously, but also the packets per second, and I'll get a little bit more in that, we're getting a little bit more detailed, technical, has been going up as well, as well as the number of connected devices is exploding, as we all know. Everybody's got a PlayStation, a phone, and the Internet of Things very soon, uh, proliferating the number of connected devices, right? So definitely enterprises and alike organizations need to protect themselves with on-premise uh, security because as you just saw the line keeps going up there's no stopping it and it's uh, the line is going up steeper and steeper so more than 17 attacks have been seen uh, over 100 gig in the la only in the qu uh, third quarter of 2014 and the number of attacks keep rising and a peak bandwidth keeps rising as well and keep in mind this is only a sample right this is only the tip of the iceberg there are numerous and numerous of attacks happening at this moment already to a lot of people. So let's do a quick look on what a DDoS attack actually looks like. So we have an attacker that's using a command and control center in the, in the internet, and it's working with all these infected computers on the internet. This could be your telephone, this can be your web server, this can be your, um, your regular laptop. They have all these infected computers, they work together into a botnet start sending little bits of traffic to the victim, and when they all accumulate, it comes to these staggering amounts of bandwidth, right? Taking the service out from the internet effectively. But it's very easy to do yourself. If you're not a super hacker, you know, you can go online. You can get a, what they call a stress testing or a booters um, service. You can pay them a little bit of Bitcoin or just with a credit card, and they will launch a stress test or an attack to anyone you want to. And you can do it yourself. The tools you can download from the internet very easily. They, they have all very cool names. They've got a fantastic marketing teams called Low High Orbit Ion Cannon, the HOIC, and so on. So it's very, very easy uh, and becoming really in reach of anyone who thinks, oh, I want to run a DDoS attack now. And I mentioned this before as well, the internet of things, right? Really exciting. We can go get internet on everything and it can report on everything. But when I hear that, I think of just one thing, really big botnets, right? It's only growing and growing further and further. 
So what are you going to do against it? You need, with all this power, with all this assault, you definitely need something that can give you performance and capacity, right? You need something that can scale up with these high bandwidths and these high packets per second, packets per second uh, attacks. So you need to scale during, during multi-vector attacks because they can hit you on the network layer. They can hit you on the application layer as well. Especially application layer attacks tend to flow under the radar of your defenses because they're not coming in big uh, volumetric attack patterns. But when you protect your entire network against DDoS, you need a lot of capacity. You need to monitor for all these end stations in your network, so a lot of protected objects and a lot of capacity for black and white lists and the like. Um, and the packets per second metric, when you get down into the dirty detail, when you get more technical, is really more important than the bandwidth, which is a good indicator. But please, when you look, focus on the packets per second. And with that, I want to introduce our solution for DDoS attacks. It's the Thunder Threat Protection System. It is uh, very high performance. We can scale from 10 gig to 155 gigs of tested throughput, mitigation throughput, and very high packets per second rates. We can do up to 120 gigs or 220 million packets per second of SynFlood, for example, uh, easily. We do it all in hardware. So all the easy stuff we do in hardware, the more complex stuff we do with very powerful CPUs, right? So it's very apt to protect your entire network and a lot of capacity to set all kinds of different parameters for different parts of your network very flexible we can you can pro you can make it go automatically you can program it with aflex with regular expressions or the the bpf the berkeley packet filter the the geeks here would know what it is from the tcp dump command line right uh, your engineers will definitely love it it can run away with it and um and also it can fit in your network in any way not every network is the same right so we can be on the side we can be in line um, we can just monitor the monitor traffic. So please, when you look at DDoS protection, consider the Thunder Threat Protection System. Uh, very effective, very affordable, and very uh, flexible to integrate into your network.